what about those who just don't want to go back there and don't want to revisit what's going on? They're like, Hey, I just want to move forward. Don't want to think about the past. How do you, how do you approach that? There's a few different ways. And I guess it, it looks at kind of exploring what the block is. Um, for some clients, we talk about this, this notion of, of a window of tolerance. Um, so part of, uh, the use of helping a client with skills is that we can kind of expand their window of tolerance. So essentially what that means is a client may be able to handle emotions with when they're within a particular window. And if the emotions get kind of outside of that, they, they may become very distressed. Um, so a client who has significant trauma and not very many skills may have a very narrow window, window of tolerance. So addressing something like trauma would be very difficult for them to, because their, their window is so narrow and it is very likely they'd be um, experiencing emotions outside of that window. Um, so I'd be looking at kind of what the block is. And again, like what's going to be best for this particular person to reach their particular goals and you know one size doesn't fit all and those who just uh, just block or dissociate from dissociates a different element but just try to block out what's happened before and shut themselves off from any memories thoughts feelings and then they function relatively well in day-to-day -day life they've got a high performing uh, you know, job or role or, you know, they're like, nah, just, I just don't think about it. That's just something that that's happened in the past. Do you see any issues with that? My, my like catchphrase that I use um, is, and I'll often share this with clients, you know, something's only a problem if it's a problem. So if you're telling me you've had trauma in your past, but you function fine, you've got no issues with work relationships, getting out of bed in the morning, day to day, emotion regulation, you feel, you feel fine, then great, go off in the world and do what you're doing. And, and, you know, I applaud you. That's, that's wonderful. Um, so, so there is, we don't want to pathologize something that's not a problem mm. just because someone has had trauma experiences does not necessarily mean that they are traumatized. Um, so, so trauma impacts people differently. Um, for other people, I would be exploring like, is it the case that everything is okay? Or is it that there's maybe some stuff we're avoiding and suppressing and it's popping up in sort of um, unexpected different ways and it's maybe worth looking at. But at the same time, like always offering that as a choice that the client has complete control over when and how they do that, if they choose to do it, it's totally up to them. I think there's a very, very fine line, isn't there, between uh, identifying is this an issue or is it not an issue when they've never done any work up until that point? And like, well, if I, if I go and think about it, then what, what use is that going to do to me? Because it's just going to make it even worse. I'm doing pretty well. I just don't want to think about it anymore. It's, it's a tough, tough line to, to grab, especially as psychologists and, and therapists and that sort of stuff. <laughs> you want to go back. Why are you the way that you are? Yeah. Yeah. We, we naturally want to kind of formulate and make meaning of things, but it may not always be what the client needs. Maybe they just need a couple of skills to get them through those moments of anxiety and they're good to go. Um, it just, it really depends, I guess. But um, I, I heard a, a fantastic analogy um, with sort of trying to figure out the ways in which trauma can impact us. And if something is a problem or if it's just something we can leave behind and go forward in life. And I think it's, again, from the, from the DBT um, Marshall Linehan course, I, I think that's where I've heard it from. But this analogy of... Um, sort of this cupboard that we might have. Um, and it's maybe a cupboard that's like really messy and it's got lots of things just like shoved in there in no order and we kind of push it closed. And every so often, you know, a gust of wind might come by or someone walks past and cause it's so jammed full, it opens up and everything that's inside it just kind of falls out all over the floor. And we just like scramble to shove it back in and we go through this same process. And this is what can happen with trauma 
where we push it away, we push it away, we shove it away in that, you know, part of our brain that's right at the back that we don't go to, don't want to think about. But every so often something that seems really small or completely un out of the blue and unrelated is just that thing that opens up that, that closet and that cupboard and everything kind of falls out and we have this really strong emotional reaction to something that is this seemingly quite small. Mm. Um, and so when trying to figure out with clients, you might have that question of, is this worth me actually exploring and unpacking? Um, that's, that's the analogy I'll give them to try and help them reflect on their own emotions and behaviors. And, and, and um, as I think Marsha says, what we have to do is kind of put the, those things in the cupboard one by one in a nice, nice, neat order so that if we need to or want to, we can go open it up, pull something out, put it back in, but it's not um, this overwhelming flood of, of experiences that we get um, mm. out of the blue. There are certain people who never, never access therapy in their entire lives. And yet they would carry around a lot of trauma from what's happened in the past. And that will come out in their behaviors or their experiences. Well, what would you say to somebody who doesn't, doesn't plan to go to therapy, uh, just doesn't want a bar of it, but is open to hearing something that may, may be helpful in, in the lines of trauma, stress, fear, that sort of stuff. Uh, what, what would be your words for that, for those? Um, my suggestion would be if, if people are interested, there are lots of great online resources nowadays, um, you know, podcasts, YouTube videos, um, online, online uh, actual courses that, that are offered. Like I know the MindSpot um, clinic is, is a place that does online um, courses with some like email and, and phone support. So there are options to explore if you don't feel like you want to or need to take that plunge of um, going and seeing a, a therapist. Um, at the same time, I think people are fascinating and we, <laughs> I think any one of us could probably go see a therapist and unpack some stuff about ourselves. And, and if nothing else, just um, better understand ourselves and the way we function in our relationships, in the world around us, the relationship we have with ourselves. Like these are, I think, important things for us to understand that can really help us live a, uh, I, um, I don't want to use the word happy, but maybe like satisfied, full kind of life. Mm. 